Hello and welcome back to the Open SAP Cross System Conversion to SAP S4 HANA. We are in week one, this is unit three, that is the second part of project plan and breakdown into preparation and realization. In the first part, we had a closer look on the project planning activities and introduced SAP Activate, project methodology. In this part, we are going to focus on special attention topics when it comes to a conversion towards SAP S4 HANA. We will touch several topics that are important to consider and might lead to additional activities in the project plan. Our first attention topic we want to look at is about the planned target architecture. The goal is clear. It is about getting to towards S4HANA. But from an architecture perspective, there are several areas that need to be evaluated. Based on the results of these evaluations, further activities or sub projects must be planned to achieve the goal. The architecture includes several aspects on different levels. First of all, it is too important to understand what kind of additional add-ons or business functions are in use and are required to be available in the target architecture. Consider all add-ons from SAP and third party. Please note that an add-on might not be released or that there might be a delay in releasing the add-on for S4HANA. This is also true for third-party add-ons. Consider the release plan of add-ons and match it to the project plan. Note, th note that there are third-party add-ons that are rather consulting solutions than real add-ons. Run tools such as the pre-check and the maintenance planner early because these tools help to identify potential issues early in the project. As for HANA brings new capabilities such as Fiori but also PDF forms. This requires that the right system components are available in the target architecture, such as NetWeaver Gateway for Fiori or Adobe DEC Document Services ADS that, for example, requires NetWeaver Java. Please note that these capabilities might also be delivered from the cloud. This brings us to the next topic. All integrated and connected systems must be checked. This is true for connected SAP systems, but also for third-party systems as well. Important factors to check are check major connected systems, check satellite systems, check releases and the versions of the connected systems, consider simplification list and the blacklist for remote function modules, test relevant critical interfaces as early as possible. In addition, it is recommended to check if there are some dependencies with regard to the release versions of the connected systems. It must be made sure that the connected environments are released for S4HANA. So, check if every version is fitting to each other. Check the so-called Netview for Hub systems such as BW Enterprise Portal PIPO for their interoperability for S4HANA. An upgrade of these systems might be required as well. Check the HANA revision. Sizing is something that needs to be examined as well. Sizing is specifically required if you move from NETP to the HANA database. The HANA database must be sized appropriately. So run a proper sizing for the HANA database. But also, the application side is it recommended to be validated if the sizing still suits. This goes along with the usage of Fiori. So consider a check of application sizing, considering the new functions leveraged by S4HANA, including Fiori. Again, these are activities that need to be evaluated during the prepare phase, since this can lead to additional tasks in the project plan. Conversions can cost significant amount of time that can't be avoided. There are, there are must-do activities that need to be executed. All this must be considered with a realistic planning in the project plan. To put this into a plan, an appropriate way is a sandbox approach. The, uh, a sandbox approach is the appropriate way to plan for this and to assess the unknown in terms of timing, but also corrections and mitigation activities that need to be considered. A sandbox should be built up as realistic as possible, ideally based on a copy of production. A sandbox offers even more advantages, because it can be used for many different purposes. To learn and get first hands-on experience of a conversion that can be used for downtime optimization purposes as well. To learn and test about the functional changes relevant to your environment described in the simplification list to check data quality issues and to trigger the right mitigation activities with the right stakeholders in time. 
Note that for correcting data issues in finance, business stakeholders might need to be involved as well. One might argue that building up a sandbox extends the project time and the project effort. But a good preparation for an S4HANA conversion is everything. And you will help later during project execution. In a nutshell, a sandbox allows to better plan for the unknown in your concrete environment that can be reflected in the project plan. s on-premise has yearly innovation cycles. This means that a new release is planned to be published once a year. As an example, as of now, at the time of this course, we have s 4 1709 with the feature pack FPS2 delivered. This is the current available s 4 release for on-premise. In September, a new release, s 4 1809, is planned to be released to the customer. These release cycles need to be considered in the project plan, specifically if you have a long-running project. From that perspective, it is recommended to clarify the s 4 target release upfront you're planning to go live with. Several aspects or questions should be answered and should be taken into consideration. Check what the current available s 4 release is. Are there any features required that are only delivered in a future release, but where you want to take the first preparation steps already now? Consider the total time of the conversion project. Are there any new releases or feature packs delivered during the runtime of your project that you need to take in consideration? Consider the end of the standard maintenance of the release you're planning to start with. For that, consult the product availability metrics. Take the HANA database revision into your planning as well, because the HANA database gets new revisions and releases as well. There might be different ways to address this. All options come with pros and cons and must be balanced out as part of the project preparation to define the best option that fits to your context. Again, this is specifically true for long-running conversion projects. On the previous slide, we spoke about the target release for S4HANA. Here, we look at the source release for the conversion. So where are you come starting from? In general, Having a business suite system with a release of ERP 6.0 is already a good starting point. It does not matter what enhancement pack EHP you are on. Also, it does not really matter what database you are running on. The best way forward is to the direct way, so converting your current system directly into an s 4 system. We call this a one-step approach. But there are some prerequisites for the source system. Here are just some key points. The source system must be on ERP 6.0. Only ABAP systems can directly be converted to S4HANA. If there is a Java stack in place, then the source system must be split first. The source system must be already on Unicode, because S4HANA only supports Unicode. If the systems are already running on the HANA database, it needs to be on the HANA version HANA 2. If the direct way and one-step approach is not possible, then a two-step approach needs to be considered. We will speak about one-step versus two-step approach on the next slide as well. In a nutshell, there's always a way to convert to SAP S4HANA, even for systems older than ERP 6.0, so don't be worried. But the ways to convert to S4HANA are different that is also depending on the source system. Therefore, the situation of the source system must be checked as part of the project preparation phase because this can lead to additional tasks and activities in the plan. As just mentioned on the previous slide, there are several ways to convert to S4HANA. In general, we differentiate two different approaches to get to S4HANA. The one-step approach and the two-step approach. As you can already imagine, this has an impact on the project plan and therefore must be addressed as part of the preparation. One step means convert from suite on HANA NEDB to S4 HANA in one step. This includes converting the application, the data, and the database in one step. The benefits of a one step approach are move to S4 HANA directly with all the benefits, do things once in the right way, for example, custom code adaptations, one time downtime only, one testing phase only. This is the recommended approach if no road blockers or showstoppers exist. 
If there are road blockers, then a two-step approach needs to be taken. Two-step means move first from suite on NETP to business suite on HANA and then convert to S4HANA in the second step. Basically, it means that project tasks and risks are distributed across several phases into two steps. The first step of a two-step approach can be seen as a technical step with lower involvement of business and can be combined with other preparation activities towards S4HANA transition. For example, Unicode conversion, already first custom code checks, etc. Here's an overview what can be a reason for a two-step approach. Current system is not on Unicode. Technical readiness of the current system, for example, a wrong starting release that is lower than required. Functional readiness with regards to simplification items, with regards to business functions, add-ons, industry solutions, and so on. Customer roadmap that includes other projects in pipeline that are in parallel in execution. Timing, risk, skills might be other factors to consider. But keep in mind that a two-step approach requires also two downtimes. As you can imagine, the one-step approach is the preferred option since the project time is shorter and there's only one downtime for the productive environment required. But it is crucial to check as part of the project preparation if there are no choice stoppers or other constraints exist that prevent a one-step approach. If so, then you must plan for a two-step approach. Now let's quickly look at the conversion itself and how this can impact the project plan. Basically, there are four blocks. First, it is all about preparation. This is reflected in the timing in the slide as the point T1. Here you must check all the prerequisites to allow for proper planning. This includes to execute the pre-checks for S4HANA on the source system as well. The pre-check report is a tool provided by SAP. Second, three more topics need to be done. It is the maintenance planner to, be calculate, to calculate the so-called stack XML that is, is required by the software update manager, the Zoom tool. For S4 HANA only, the maintenance planner that runs on, at SAP on the service marketplace can be used for this stack calculation. This means that your system environment, including the solution manager, must be connected already in a proper way to the service marketplace. If this is not the case, then please plan it in. The pre-checks are executed here as must do. As mentioned on the first block, the recommendation is to rather execute this already during the preparation, since this allows to consider results of the pre-check with the right activities in the project plan right from the beginning. Also, the adaptation of custom code must be considered here at the latest. Third, the conversion itself is executed. The conversion is done with the software update manager, the Zoom tool. The tool executes on database migration, the software update, and the data conversion to the new S4HANA data structures. Most of the conversion, specifically for the logistics part, is done here. Fourth, after the software upgrade tool is finalized, further activities must be executed. These are so-called application-specific migration activities that are part of the business downtime. Most of the finance conversion is done at part of this step. In general, it's recommended to practice this on the sandbox, but also to consider several runs during the project. Details about the conversion can be found in the conversion guide. The conversion to S4HANA includes many different aspects of the, the conversion that needs to be considered in the project phases. This slide summarizes different aspects from a conversion perspective. This goes along with the project methodology that was presented in Unit 2. Aspects that need to be executed before the conversion starts must be considered in the project plan as part of the prepare and explore phase. These are topics such as custom code analysis, assessing the impact of the simplification list, defining and preparing the system landscape and architecture. This includes the architecture required for Fiori. Security authorization cleanup and archiving activities with regards to custom code, but also data. Define appropriate conversion approach, including the number of conversion cycles. During the realize and the deploy phase, the required recommended actions from the simplification list must be worked on. In addition to that, more topics should be considered in the project plan. Performance and load tests, user experience and theory-related activities, 
adaptation of custom code to make it as for HANA and HANA ready, consideration data of data validation and reconciliation activities, testing in general, operational aspects for handing over the S for HANA operations after go live. After go live during the run phase, the post conversion activities can be addressed. Some of the changes from the simplification list can be addressed post conversion. So this can be done during the run phase. Also, continued cleanup activities are recommended. So let's finalize. There are several specific topics that need to be addressed as part of project planning. It is important to check as part of the preparation that all of these topics are considered properly, if required, are reflected in the project plan. With that, I hope you've gotten a good overview of what is relevant for project planning when it comes to an S4HANA conversion. And with this, we came to the end of this unit. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. And for now, I would like to hand over to Hendrik, who's giving you more details on project goals and skills in the next unit.